If you're wondering about how to understand some of the more advanced features that JotForm Tables makes available, look no further than this video. I'm going to be going into detail about advanced features like lookups, rollups, how to connect tables, and more. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about that, do check out our YouTube channel. We will include links below to our channel. But without further ado, let's just jump into the heart of this video. We are talking about those advanced features within JotForm tables that are going to make your life way easier when it comes to organizing your data. So first up, we have formulas. Now, if you're not familiar with formulas inside of a database, they work very differently than formulas do inside of Excel or a different spreadsheet tool. I know JotForm tables might look a little bit like a spreadsheet at times, but trust me, when it comes to writing formulas, it's very different. In fact, the biggest difference is that when you write a formula in JotForm tables, it is going to reference everything inside of that table. You can't write a formula just to a specific cell like you can in a spreadsheet tool. So let's jump into how to write a formula here. You see that I've got a team table and in this table I've got first name and last name and phone number of my different team members for this business. So in this case what I want to do is take a first name and a last name. I already have that data and I want to smush it together and put it into a full name field that's automatically computing and outputting what that combination looks like. So to start I just click on add up here to add a new column and I need to click into the middle panel here to get those more advanced features. Specifically, I'm looking for an advanced formula in this case. So I make the selection and click next. Now I can name this column. In this case, I'll call it the full name field. And now is where I get to put together my formula. So if you are familiar with Excel, a lot of the same features and formula language will apply here. So in this case, for example, maybe I want to use a concatenate formula, which allows me to string together multiple pieces of information. So on the bottom left, you'll see that I have my different columns. And on the bottom right, you have your different functions and operators that you can apply to write your formula. So in this case, I just want to smush together, as I said, so my first name and my last name, or in formula speak, we would call this a concatenate. So I want to take that first name, and then I want to combine it with the last name. Now, if I create this column right now, what we're going to see is the first name and the last name smushed together with no space, and it doesn't really look how we would expect it to, nor have I correctly spelled first name, so or full name, so let me make an adjustment to my field name there. So in order to make these changes, I just need to click up here and select Edit Formula, and then I can go into these uh, the formula and really rewrite it how I need to. In this case, after this first uh, name, I need to add a space so I can start typing in a couple spaces and then I need to bring in another uh, concatenate here. So make sure to include that space so that you have the first name, then some space in between and then that last name and if we apply those changes we see that we have properly have some spaces in between the names. So you can go in and make changes to this but you get the idea. You're able to use a formula to perform all kinds of different functions. And this particular formula is just a text formula in this example. But if I go back to edit formulas and you scroll through all the different functions and basic operators, you'll see that you can do all kinds of things from absolute values, averages, etc. So a lot of math is entirely possible inside of these formulas as well. Now after formulas, we need to talk about how we can use other advanced features like lookups and rollups. Now if you're not familiar with databases, then these ideas or concepts are going to be completely foreign to you. But what we can do is essentially connect things across our different tables or tabs. In this case, we have our projects. So I have three different projects listed out. And as we already looked at, we have our team members here. So if we wanted to assign team members to projects, we could bring in some information. So for example, first we need to have that connection where we have the project connect to the team. In order to do this, we add a field as I've done and you'll want to click on connection here on the far right. And are you going to connect to a form or a table? In this case, I'm connecting to this tab inside of this very table. So first we will say connect to a table or connect a table. And in this case, I'm going to name this as the team and I'll click next. 
and we need to select the table that this data that we're connecting to lives in. And in this case, both of these tabs, the projects and the team, both live in my table that's called advanced features. So I click on this, and now it asks me what tab this data lives in. In this case, it lives in the team tab. And what, what column do I wanna bring in and, sh and connect to these projects? Well, it makes the most sense to bring in our full name field in this case so that we can see the full name of the person who's, who's on this or assigned to this project. Now, if you want to allow a multiple selection, toggle this on or off. By default, it's set to on. Multiple selection meaning that you could bring in multiple team members onto the project. Let's suppose in my case, only one team member is assigned to a project. I'll toggle this off. You can set a default value if you'd like and then create the column. Now, once we have this column connected, you'll see that it has the connection to team here and I automatically get access to only those team members that are in my other tab over here on the team tab. So I can assign my team members as follows. Go ahead and connect to them this way. That is the essence of putting together a connection. Now we need to talk about lookups and rollups. This is a more advanced function that only takes part after you've built a connection. So now that we've connected our projects to our team, we can move forward with this next step. So let's add, in this case, a lookup field. A lookup field allows us to essentially look through our database, find information that lives at the connection level and bring it into this other level. So in our case, for example, looking at projects, we have connected projects to team and if we wanna bring in something like, let's say the phone number of the team member and display it here on the projects tab, that's where a lookup comes into play. So we add and we select formula here and we can go for the lookup function. And from here, I'm gonna call this phone number and select next. And it's saying, what column do you want to look up? And so what we're doing is we're saying, look, we're connecting through the team connection and we wanna look something up so we wanna connect through that team connection, right? And we wanna look up the column that is phone number on the team tab. So by creating this field here, we can then bring through phone numbers that are connected to these team members. So if we go back over to the team table or the team tab, we see that in George's case, he has this 818 number that ends in 4545. And when we look back at the project that George is connected to, that is the same phone number that's showing up here. If we connect to somebody other than George, like let's say we brought in Kylie instead, of course the phone number will automatically update with the phone number that is connected to Kylie back on that team tab. Another advanced feature is the count function. This is what we use when we're trying to figure out how many times we've connected a record across. So for example, let's go back to our team and imagine that we've connected team to projects. So again, we would follow these steps. We would build a connection to the project and we would call this whatever we wanted to, in this case, projects. We would assign where we're getting the data from. We're getting it from the projects tab inside of our advanced features table. And we wanna to connect to the project name. Now, if we allow to connect to multiple projects, that's kind of the key here. And we could say, okay, well, Kylie is connected to project one and project three. And in this case, let's say Sarah is connected to project two. Well, if you wanna just quickly and easily count how many different projects a particular team member is currently assigned to, you can use the count function and it's here in the middle ta uh, tab again. We just select counter and click next. And in this case, we can call it count and we choose a countable field. In this case, the projects field. And in order for you to have a countable field, the field has to include something that allows for multiple connections. So again, when we set up that projects connection from our team to our projects, we allowed ourselves to pick multiple projects at once. And once we're all set, we just click on create column and we see that this automatically tells us how many different selections are made here. If we decided to assign George to a project as well, let's say he got assigned to project one, you see that that count function is automatically updated for us. Another similar advanced field type is the rollup. In this case, we can bring over to roll up and this allows us to do kind of a hybrid between lookups and counts. Uh, in this case, we're able to use formulas in conjunction with connected entries 
and sum or average data into a rollup. So again, we're looking through that connection and bringing in information and applying some sort of formula to it in the rollup field. Now, one last advanced feature I'd like to leave you with is the idea about grouping. And so in order to apply a grouping, what you can do is right click on any column and come down to the group by. You'll find it here at the top of these options. And when you make this selection, you'll notice that these, all of these uh, records, all of this data is now automatically grouped by these projects. And so in the case where everyone is only involved on project one, it would show up here. Everyone who's uh, involved with projects one and three are gonna show up in this middle section, projects two. If I make changes to these projects and, uh, and remove a project, you'll see that in a moment, this record will get updated in that grouping. So just by quickly refreshing my page, I see that Kylie is now moved up into the group of just having project one. Now grouping tends to work best if you don't allow multiple connections at once. So as you saw in my previous example where I've allowed a person to be connected to multiple projects, it gets a little messy with the grouping. But if you turn that off and only allow things to connect one time, then you have a cleaner grouping like this where you can see things by project and to really quickly see this information, you can then also push on the create a new tab feature. And I'll just call this new tab. And this is going to automatically create a particular subset of data that has this filter automatically applied to it. So in this case, I went with the connected to project one and we're filtering automatically in this new tab. It's a replica of the team just uh, you know, automatically filtered here for us. So this is an introduction to a lot of the advanced features that you can use, but there are plenty more. Dive into Jotform tables on your own and explore the different features available, but do let us know in the chat and questions below if you have any particular questions or features that you'd like to see. We'd love to hear from you.